I will be using this diagram to explain this video. And apart from this email, which I found in the top left, I cannot find a creator. So if anybody does know, please let me know. This will be discussing the clone cores only. The Navy and Special Forces are not included. But before we examine the GAR, we must first lay down the basics. First off, I will be using the term GAR, or Grand Army of the Republic, and the term Clone Army interchangeably. This may not be technically correct, as there were non-clone officers in the GAR, but for the sake of this video, they will be the same. Next, I want to go through the basic structure of the Clone Army and its ranks. The ranks of the Clone Army are as follows. Clone Troopers, who were the most numerous in the GAR, and had no input in command or battles simply following orders, as good soldiers do. Corporals were promoted troopers who had some limited command ability. Sergeants would lead a squad, including troopers, corporals and a sergeant, equaling 10 clones. These squads would be the backbone of the GAR. Second lieutenant and full lieutenant were the lowest officer rank. They commanded platoons as well as assisting captains. Captains commanded companies. It should be mentioned here that the ranks from captain and up seem to be rather flexible, as we see commanders in charge of companies and corps simultaneously. This can be seen with Commander Cody, who is the commanding officer for multiple unit types. Another infamous example of this is Captain Rex, who commands a brigade. The 501st is called a legion, but for this video I'll be using the term brigade and legion interchangeably, as their sizes are comparable. Above the rank of captain is the major. There are a few named clone majors in both canon and legends, but since there are so few of them, we will be ignoring the clone majors in this video. Above majors is a series of commander varieties. These include battalion commanders, such as Commander Wolf of the 104th, Regimental Commanders, Brigade slash Legion Commanders, and Martial Commanders. Most of the Commander ranks should seem obvious, but Martial Commanders may not. They would lead corps alongside High Jedi Generals. And to truly understand the GAR, you can think about it in terms of corps scattered throughout the galaxy. So a corps consisted of 40,960 clones. This number includes all the previously mentioned ranks of Troopers, Corporals, Sergeants, second and full lieutenants, captains, majors, and commanders, as well as multiple Jedi Generals to lead the larger units within the corps, and a high Jedi General to lead the corps itself alongside its martial commander. In the entire GAR, there was a total of 80 corps. Above the corps is a sector army. Each sector army would contain four corps. There is a tier above sector army, which is the systems army. A systems army contained two sector armies, so on paper, each system's army should contain 8 corps. However, both the sector and system's army were primarily used for administration. A whole sector army would never be engaged all at once or in a single place. Instead, they would be spread out throughout the galaxy. We will first examine the first system's army, under the command of Mace Windu. The first system's army, or system's army Alpha, contained around 300,000 clones. Because of the confusing nature of sector armies, we will be ignoring them completely and focusing on the cores. The known cores inside System Army Alpha include the 327th Star Corps under the command of Marshal Commander Bly and Jedi General Ayla Secura, the 9th Assault Corps under the command of Jedi General Luminara Unduli and Marshal Commander Gree, which was so large that it contained another corps within its ranks. This was the infamous 41st Elite Corps, which was also commanded by Gree and Luminara Unduli. Other corps in System Army Alpha included the 21st Nova Corps, otherwise known as the Galactic Marines, under the command of Kiedi Mundi and Marshal Commander Bikara, the 91st Recon Corps, under the command at various times of Mace Windu, Commander Pons, Jedi General Adi Gallia, Jedi General Stas Ali, and Marshal Commander Neo. We will also assume that the Flame Trooper Corps is within Systems Army Alpha, as it has been seen under the command of Kiedi Mundi who himself was within Systems Army Alpha, where he commanded the Galactic Marines. The Flame Trooper Corps was also commanded by Commander Jet at least once during the Second Battle of Geonosis. That is the five known corps out of eight within Systems Army Alpha. As much as I would like to explain the subunits of these corps, there are simply too many unknowns and not enough information about whether the Martial Commanders had direct control over these subunits. For example, Commander Gree is the commander of the Knight for Assault Corps, but is also shown to have direct control over the 41st Elite Corps, 41st Scout Battalion, and Green Company. 
A core commander could not possibly command this many subunits simultaneously in battle, as this idea completely ignores the chain of command. Moving on to the first system's army, it was commanded by Jedi General Obi-Wan Kenobi and interestingly, Marshal Commander Cody. I say this is interesting because a clone commander is never shown in command of systems army alpha, or even any other sector army. We can assume that because Cody and Obi-Wan were so close, maybe Cody went along with Kenobi as an advisor to the entire first systems army, as well as his own core. This also means that Cody is the highest ranking clone we have ever seen in the Grand Army of the Republic. This brings up questions about the role of a martial commander. Were they solely supposed to command corps and in a few rare exceptions would assist in the higher command of units? Or was the rank more flexible? Many questions which we do not have any answers for. Speaking of Obi-Wan and Cody, they also jointly commanded the 7th Sky Corps, which as with all corps contained 40,960 clones. This contained the 212th Attack Battalion, also confusingly commanded by Cody and Obi-Wan. Something that often goes unnoticed is that technically, Marshal Commander Cody and Obi-Wan Kenobi are in command of the 501st Legion, and therefore on paper, Cody has command over Anakin. Obviously in the field, this would never be the case. Because we only know of one of the corps out of eight in the entire Third System's army, here are some well-known subunits. As mentioned, the fighting 501st under the command of Captain Rex and Jedi General Anakin Skywalker, the 104th Attack Battalion under the command of Commander Wolf and Jedi General Plo Koon, and towards the end of the war, the 332nd Company under the command of Commander Rex. This was the subunit of a regiment that Rex was the commander of. Believe it or not, this unit is never named. Anakin split the 501st for Ahsoka to have command, even though he totally didn't have to because she could have just been given an existing subunit of the 501st. So whether this means that the 501st was split in half, or a smaller group was splintered off for Rex and Ahsoka to command, we do not know. While we are talking about the 501st, there seems to be a lot of confusion about its size. For some reason, people often refer to it as a battalion, probably to make it more comparable with the 212 attack battalion. But no, the 501st was a legion, which in a GAR is a brigade-sized unit, it also doesn't help that in Embara, Rex compares the 501st to a battalion. What? What happened? They're doing the right thing, Dogma. Because if this is how soldiers are rewarded for heroic actions, then one day, every man in this battalion may face a similar fate. Every man in this battalion's battalion. What? We only know the components of Systems Army Alpha and the Third Systems Army. We do not know how subunits, such as the Coruscant Guard, fit into the GAR structure. But I think it is safe to assume that they are a separate unit, and not within a Systems Army. The Coruscant Guard was commanded by Commanders Fox, Fire, Fawn and Stone. We do not know what corps were within the 1st Sector Army and the 5th to 20th Sector Armies. There was also the 87th Sentinel Corps, and the 416th Star Corps, which was under the command of Jedi General Karuk, and they are all of the known 9 corps in the GAR out of a total of 80. There are too many problems with this structure to list them all, so instead I'm going to suggest some minor fixes that would drastically improve the structure of the GAR. First, get rid of the Sector and Systems armies. I know 80 individual corps might seem like a lot of moving parts, but when compared to the size of the galaxy they were fighting in, I don't see why the Republic couldn't manage it. Next, do not have flexibility with what ranks commanded what units. Always have a Martial Commander in charge of a corps, and follow the rank structure downwards, laid out earlier in this video. In the case of the 501st, it would have been much simpler to promote Rex to Brigade Commander, because even though in the show he was second in command of Skywalker, on paper he was not. Of course, I haven't mentioned how the Third System's army does not contain sector armies, and therefore it is unclear what armies the 9th Sky Corps, 501st Legion, and 104th Battalion belong to. They are just under the direct control of Obi-Wan and Cody. Or is there another Marshal Commander in charge of the army above the 7th Sky Corps? Is that Commander Cody, or some other unknown Marshal Commander? If it was, then Cody would be in charge of someone who was in charge of Cody. This is ignoring all the other subunits that we have no idea about. Or the fact that this diagram assumes that the clone army is at a strength of 3.2 million clones. 
assuming the math of 10 systems armies being at full strength is correct. But the ultimate problem here is that no one at Lucasfilm ever sat down and decided to write out an entire new fictitious army, so we'll have to work around the limitations we've been given.